This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview. You know, MrMedia.com, MRMedia.com. Come on by and check it out. We're brought to you today on iPhones, Android, Palm, and BlackBerry by the Stitcher app for mobile devices. Also available by subscription for free on iTunes. Mr. Media is also sponsored by the PartyAuthority.us. Planning a wedding, mitzvah, or corporate event? For any and all occasions, call the Party Authority nationwide at 1-800-DIAL-DJs. That's 1-800-342-5357. One call does it all. So where was I before the commercial? Uh, oh yeah, Mr. Media is recorded live from St. Petersburg, Florida, the new new media capital of the world and hometown of the world's number one biggest loser, me. Hey, who wrote that? Man, I gotta change my password. Although an admitted reality TV junkie, I have pretty much resisted the whole biggest loser phenomenon. The name of the NBC show turned me off from the start, and the one time I did, I did watch it, I felt manipulated by the editing. Oh, look, the pounds are falling off that woman. I feel so happy for her. Oh, look at that fat dude. He's getting verbally assaulted by his trainer, Jillian, because she thinks he's not working hard enough. I feel so bad for him. Oh no, he just had a heart attack and died live on network TV. Okay, I don't think that last thing ever happened, but it does seem inevitable, doesn't it? Okay, so why am I about to interview Phil and Amy Parham, the 2008 winners of The Biggest Loser, Season 6? Well, it doesn't hurt that they have a new book and DVD, The 90 Day Fitness Challenge, to promote, of course. But I was also told that they're nice, down-to-earth folks. And from what I've learned of these South Carolina realtors, it seems like they have a good story to tell. Now, if you're not a regular viewer of the show, here's a little clip to bring you up to speed on the Parhams. Um, video? Okay, <laughs> I'm going to keep talking for a minute. We'll wait for the video. This is a video, I think it's from uh, CBN, the 700 Club. Okay, we're going to roll it now. Here we go. As the drugstore cowboy. We want to avoid. That is, unless you've got something to lose. Phil and Amy Parham were obese. At his heaviest, uh, Phil weighed 340 pounds. Guys, Amy, in the, in the booth? Philip had never seen the weight loss reality show, but Amy was a big fan. I would sit and watch The Biggest Loser and cry and eat ice cream <laughs> and think, oh, I wish I could do that and change my life. Phil and Amy met more than 20 years ago at a Bible college. To some degree, their weight was always an issue. 10, 15, you know, pounds, that kind of, that kind of struggle. I think mine was mental. I always saw myself as a heavy person, so I always thought I was heavy and really in actuality I was probably like Amy said 10 or 15 pounds above where I should have been. Phil and Amy married in 1988 while Phil set out in business as a mortgage broker. His poor self-image drove him to succeed. I wanted the big house, I wanted the big car, I wanted to look good in front of others so I could have a certain kind of self-esteem. His long hours led to unhealthy eating habits and a gradual weight gain. In four years, Amy gave birth to three boys and gained a total of 70 pounds with their pregnancies. But Phil and Amy's weight wasn't their only struggle. In 2003, their youngest son, Rhett, was diagnosed with autism. That, for me, was so, it was devastating as a mother because, you know, you have dreams for your children. You want to see them, you know, be the president or you want to see them go to Harvard or you want to see them, well, even just get married and have children. Autism has no cure. But Amy poured all her time and energy on fixing her son. At night, she would binge eat to cope with the stress. That stress compounded when Phil's business partner left him and he lost his business. It just was like everything that I felt like I had built got taken away 
So it's kind of hard from go from the Mercedes to the pickup truck. It, it's just, it was really, really bad. We struggled to hang on to our house and to pay our bills. Amy became depressed and even thought about ending her life. There was a hole in the ceiling of like this one room. It's like a kind of a library type room. And you could see a beam through the, you know, like there was a hole because it went up to the attic. And there was one day that I was laying there. I thought I could put a rope over that. Phil and Amy Parham, welcome to Mr. Media. Hey, how are you? Hey, Bob. Hey, guys, how are you? Good. <laughs> welcome to the show. Um, so tell me how this conversation really starts. Honey, I've signed us up to appear on a network TV show called The Biggest Loser. <laughs> well, what happened, I, it was a little bit of manipulation on my part. Um, it was Valentine's weekend, and I told Phil, I said, let's go down to Atlanta for the weekend for Valentine's Day, and, you know, let's go to a hotel, have a nice dinner, be, you know, a more romantic getaway, and by the way, um, we're standing in a casting call on of about 600 other fat people and for, trying out for a reality show. <laughs> for six hours. For six hours. And he was a good enough sport and loves me enough, I guess, that he went along with it. I guess I was looking for my prize at the end. The hotel <laughs> later. <laughs> I, I mean, you weren't offended by this at all, Phil? Uh, no. You know, actually, I was a big American Idol fan. Uh, on Tuesday nights, I would watch it, and then I would go in the other room and see Amy sitting there crying, and like she always tells the story, eating her ice cream. And while I was watching the Biggest Loser. Well, I was watching, crying because I was manipulated by the, the uh, editing on the Biggest Loser myself. <laughs> she was manipulated <laughs> as well. But I would uh, come in, and I might watch a little bit of the way in to see who won. And I never really knew the concept of the show, which is something I always tell people. If you're going to go on a reality show, you should probably watch it first. So at least you know the strategy behind it. Yeah, because my strategy was to lose weight, <laughs> and uh, you know I did that successfully. You know, so but um, you know I was I was lost enough, and it they gave me hope to be able to think that I could lose weight. So you know I really wanted it from that, but you know being a man, I was kind of prideful about it, and I, I just made fun of the whole thing, which is kind of funny. We were making jokes. I was making jokes the whole time, which got me noticed by the producers and the, uh, the I mean, I'm sorry, the, ca the casting people. And uh, I was just there having a good time, making jokes the whole time. So, you know, maybe that was, I don't know. They, they, everybody asked me, how did you get on the show? And I just. We have no idea. We have no idea. <laughs> they, like, they saw something, I guess. I thought it was interesting that you said that, that I think that was great advice about going on a reality show to having watched the show before. Uh, <laughs> we watched uh, several seasons of uh, Hell's Kitchen on Fox, oh, and yeah. it was astounding to me how many people n had clearly never watched the show and were just blown away by uh, right. uh, 